Well, we're beginning to understand the Sharia. And how do we know this? Because Muslims are telling us we don't understand the Sharia. There was a recent article in the Washington Post that talked about the five myths of Sharia. And what it wants to do is to tell us that the things we think we know about Sharia are wrong. Myth number one, Sharia is Islamic law. Then they say, see, it's not just a book of statutes. Well, here's what Sharia is. Sharia is a process which interprets the life of Muhammad and the Quran so it applies to everyday lives. So the truth is, it's much more than a series of laws. It's how to pray, how to do anything you can imagine in your life, how to eat, drink, how to knock at a door, how to say hello. Because the whole purpose of Sharia is to be much more than a book of laws. It's to force every human being to live a life exactly like Muhammad. That is what Sharia is about. Oh, another myth, myth number two. In Muslim countries, Sharia is the law of the land. Well, that's true only in one country that I know of, and that country is Islamic State. Now, the Saudis and Pakistan also have a heavily influenced set of laws that include Sharia, but they go beyond the Sharia. Why? Well, you see, in a sophisticated world, the Sharia is not sophisticated enough to do business, and so therefore, moral laws have to be generated that are not included in the original Sharia. Myth three, they say that we believe that Sharia is anti-woman. Well, you know what? I've read Sharia texts, and they include wife beating. But why do they include wife beating? Well, you see, Muhammad tolerated wife beating. So therefore, and the Quran has a verse about wife, how to beat your wife. So therefore, I call that anti-woman. But it goes further than that, because you see the Sharia allows sex slaves. Why? Because Muhammad had sex slaves. It allows polygamy. So I consider these things, sex slaves, beatings, and polygamy to be anti-woman. Now, the Sharia likes to say, oh, we elevate women. Well, I don't want to be elevated by being beaten. Thank you. Then we have the myth that the Sharia demands brutal punishments. Well, let's take a look at some of the punishments of Muhammad. He had assassinations, slavery, and beatings. As a matter of fact, Muhammad stood by and prayed while two slaves were beaten in order to get information out of him. So Sharia includes brutal punishments, as well as some punishments that are not brutal. Then they say, myth five, that Sharia is about conquest. Well, Sharia is a little bit about conquest, but not completely about conquest. But why is it about conquest at all? Well, simple. Muhammad preached the religion for, four, no, for 13 years in Medina and converted 150 Arabs to Islam. He then went to Medina at the insistence of the Meccans, and by the practice of jihad, when he died, every Arab was a Muslim. So Sharia is about conquest. Why? Because Muhammad's success came through conquest. You'll notice here that when I'm talking about Sharia, what I do is to talk about Muhammad. Because you see, Sharia is Muhammad's law. And it's much more than any kind of law we've ever faced before. Because you see, Muhammad wants to tell us how to drink a glass of water, how to have sex, how to eat, and do everything else in our life. So Sharia is much more than the five things we understand but we need to educate ourselves until we understand all of them because it is the purpose of Islam to make sure that everyone obeys all of the Sharia, including the non-believer. Thank you.